Eloquent and vocal guest with me in the studio today. Um, I have here with me the African Action Congress presidential candidate, Mr. Amoyele Showare. Yeah, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much for bringing us. Yeah, welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And our topic for discussion today is um, Does Showare have the backing of the youths who he repeatedly, he repeatedly fights for all the time? Uh, and and, and the, the reason is simple. We have seen Mr. Showare come out 2019. He had only about 33,000 votes in that last election. And we have seen him even since that time. He's always been at the forefront of our struggles as youths, as young Nigerians. But what is, the, what is wrong? What is wrong with his candidature? What is it? This is that people don't understand what he stands for. And those are the things that we are here to discuss with Mr. Showare. So for starters, sir, can you just give us a brief introduction as to who you are, so that people can know you? <laughs> uh, my name is Omoyele Showare, and for the purpose of this show, I'm the presidential candidate for the African Action Congress, AAC, um, in the 2023 presidential election, or general election. General election. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. He doesn't want to tell you guys, but Mr. Showare is, is an activist, <laughs> turned politician, who likes to call himself a political activist? That's right. That's <laughs> exactly. A way to put it. Exactly. Exactly. So he 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 has been at this at this activism for I'm sure more than twenty years. Thirty two years. Wow. Yeah. Thirty two years yes. of if activism. I, if I if I was in the army, I would be a major general. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you ought to be the president instead. Yes. Why presidency? Why not governorship? Um. You see, when countries are in need of leaders, you don't submit to a lower position for people who are competent. If I become the governor of a state, let's use this current uh, scenario yeah. of, that we have now. If I were to be a governor of Sevendo State, yeah. which is how, your state, yeah, which is my state, how would it look to people that I'm submitting to people? The person who is president today, the understate governor, who is a lawyer like, is having issues <laughs> because <laughs> he just can't fathom why things are happening the way it is. He has set up his own state police, so to speak, but he can't get automatic weapons like a march to of the terrorists that are rampaging his state. state. So, wouldn't it be better if he was president and Buhari was governor? <laughs> I don't even think that Buhari is qualified to be a governor of the state anyway. You don't think that? No. I Why don't. not, sir? Because I... I mean, the, the man has a lot of experience. He's yes. been a leader before this country. He's been minister of petroleum. Those are not the kind of experiences that count for governors. Mm. You know, experiences that come with you forcing yourself into power, overthrowing a legitimate, democratically elected government. Um, and his experiences are mostly experience of someone who fumbled through the ranks. And that's there. Even when he did the coup, what we know is that he wasn't the one who planned the coup. Who planned the coup, sir? Well, it said there was Bamagira, Dasuki, and the rest of them. And they just went to Joss where he was and they said, hey, we're planning a coup. Can you come and sit on the throne? Because you seem to have credibility. And that's how he became uh, the head of state at that time. Hmm. He was in charge of... Uh, PDF. Yes. He flaunted, you know. He didn't really deliver what he should have delivered. He was a uh, minister of uh, the Commissioner of Petroleum. The Commissioner Resources. of Petroleum, which is a minister now. Yeah. Uh, Fela sang about the disappearance of $2.8 billion or year money that is missing mm. under his watch. And there was plenty of money that went missing also under his watch when he was PDF chairman. Uh, he was governor of Gongola State. Yes. Which is not split into well, three or three. So there's nothing, and I've never met a highway that he constructed, a university that he built, anything that you can say, wow, this was Buhari's legacy. So if people are looking for experience, we shouldn't look for failed experiences. We should look for real life experiences that can change our objective conditions in this country. So, what experiences do you have 
the thing that you think equips you for that office to be president of Nigeria? Or your qualifications? Well, yeah. I mean, anything. The presidency of Nigeria is not based on any constitutionally based qualifications. Mm. In fact, the president of Nigeria is so easy to get as long as you have a secondary school certificate. Mm. But how do you count experience for people? It's for those things that you've chosen in life, you know, causes that you've chosen in life. Everybody says Sirua is an activist, but if you look at my activist background and past, you look at it and say, what was the biggest requirement that Nigeria had when I was a student union leader? Democracy. We wanted to get out of military rules so bad. So if anybody delivered such a powerful empowerment to, say at that time, 150 million people, hmm. can you say that they don't have experience? If you had experience fighting bad guys, you know, you'll be seen as a sheriff. That's one experience. If you had experience, you know, setting up companies that, you know, actually thrive globally, that's a great experience in the entrepreneurial sector. If you're an experienced teacher or you taught in a university for 10 years, that's a great experience. So I've had experience that is even way more than... What did you lecture in, sir? I taught uh, post-colonial Africa history. Mm. Uh, in what university is this? This, uh, this is a uh, School of Visual Arts in New York. Right. And also Brooklyn Polytechnic that is now CUNY, which is City University of New York. I taught there for one year, same topic, I mean, same subject. And I taught for almost 10 years at the city you know, having a, a school of visual arts. So you have been there with me for the time. You've not been in Nigeria. Yeah, most of the time I was out of Nigeria, I was a, a lecturer, as they call it here. Mm. Yes. And also a publisher. I was publishing Sarah Reporters. Yes, yeah, Sarah also, sorry, Sarah. She also mentioned that um, Sarah Ore is the owner of um, Sarah Reporters. He's a, he's a media, media guru. If you know Sarah Reporters very well, they give you the, the juicy news. Yes. So, um, it's just very important to tell these things so that you can tell. But most, the most important thing people need for leadership is people that have vision, people who have mission, mm. people who have character, integrity, who are exposed to how the world works. Those are the leaders people look for, not gerontocrats, you know, people who are in the departure lounge of life. Nothing in this world kids prepare you and I for death. I, mm. I could die at the age of 51. That's, nothing can change that if that's my time. But I have a problem with old ideas, not necessarily old people. Take back the government. Isn't take it that, back. Take, take it back. Take him back. Yes. Take it back. That's, that's your, your, your motto for your yeah, campaign. The campaign. It was since 20... 19 that we started, 2018, 2019, we started taking back. Our motto this time around is actually we can't continue like this. Hmm. Yes. And I'm sure nobody wants to continue the way we are now. Certainly, certainly.